Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. In today's video I'm going to give you my personal wish list for update 1.51 and beyond. Be sure to let me know what you want to see in future updates in the comments down below as I'll take the best suggestions and put them into a separate video. Please be sure to watch till the end as I do have a couple of announcements to make in terms of upcoming content. Anyway, let's get straight into it with point number one. This is something that has really bothered me since 1.49 and that is inconsistent physics. So the change I'd like to make here would be to make them consistent. Now something that I've noticed when it comes to the car since update 1.49 is that the physics are very inconsistent from car to car. Some feel like they've had a massive overhaul and feel much better, others feel absolutely terrible and some feel like honestly they've not really been touched. It really is quite a disappointment to jump into a car to realise it's just as bad as it was prior to the physics change. So for me the consistency across all vehicles really needs to be there to make the most of the new physics and the ones that are genuinely just terrible really need to get a fix sooner rather than later as that is a lot of content that is completely irrelevant at this point with a bunch of cars really not suiting the new physics engine so maybe a few tweaks here and there whilst the physics are definitely better i do feel like there just isn't the consistency across the board point number two is going to be a real world track now this is something that i was expecting with the prior update i thought do you know what Honestly, surely it's going to be a real world track at this point. There's a bunch of leaks, a bunch of hints there and there, and there was nothing to say that a original track was going to be remade. And to be honest, it was an original track that not many people would have necessarily asked for. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad track, but I definitely feel we're due a proper real world racetrack. If we look at the prior ones, we've had Grand Valley Highway, which again wasn't necessarily the best received. We then had the snow track at Lake louise and then of course the most recent one with eiger nordsvond so definitely feels like at this point in time we're due a real world racetrack with the last one coming in november 2022 with road atlanta since then absolute radio silence and i feel like we definitely need to get building up with those more real world tracks Next up is going to be tuning related and for me this has to be drivetrain swaps. Now this is something that I find quite bizarre that's not in the game yet. Of course we have engine swaps, we have a bunch of different tuning parts from extreme all the way to sort of street and such like that. But there is one thing that is massively missing and that is drivetrain swaps. I honestly thought this might have come with the spec 2 update but it just wasn't meant to be. Especially since we've had the tuning system unlocked and a lot less RNG like than it was when the game first launch this is something that i feel like would be key to just getting more longevity out of these incredible models in gt7 say for example swapping a front wheel drive car to rear wheel drive four wheel drive etc just opening up that accessibility to every single car in game will just make it absolutely insane so just to prove the versatility of drivetrain swaps we could use something like a honda civic type r turn it to four wheel drive engine swap it and then make it a full blown makeshift rally car anyway let's move on to the next point this is something that's really bothered me since day one and i think a lot of people as well is that the rng in this game just needs to be removed things such as the invite system is absolutely daft at this point when we think about the likes of the bugatti chiron the aston martin valkyrie they are all clearly available since they're post-launch cars however we have the likes of the veyron and of course things such as the uh, Aston Martin Vulcan which are you know kind of locked behind these invitation systems and it just doesn't make sense that the others are not locked off but these ones still are it should be so easy to get rid of them and this is something that they have done in the first month of the launch of the game as a sorry gift to all their players things as well such as the roulette wheel really need fixing so that it isn't completely fixed against the player as the worst reward possible nine times out of ten again just things like that would improve the overall user experience honestly this is something that the fan base is going to continue to bring up next up is going to be longer events now this is something of a trend in 2024 whilst they have been much more consistent in terms of the updates coming to the game 
One thing I've noticed is that the events overall will last a maximum of anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes per update. Now there has been a few you know, differences between updates, but mostly they've been very short, very quick events that really aren't necessarily there to last you a month or two that they realistically should. Even when we saw the likes of Eigen Osvon get added, I believe there was like four or five events and that's it. It really doesn't seem enough. And again, it doesn't help that all of these events are very short, very sweet, very quick, and then done and dusted to probably never be touched again unless they come up in the weekly challenges. For me, just making the events longer and more worthwhile and giving them more replayability is absolutely key to making the events better. So for me, longer events is absolutely a must considering that 96% or so of the events in this game are too short. And that's going to move me into seasonal events. Now, this is something that I feel like I've been completely absent this year from GT7. In fact, the last time we saw anything resembling a seasonal event was, I believe, back in November of 2023 upon Spec 2's launch and the whole World Series Finals. After that, I believe we've had none in 2024. So what do I mean by seasonal events? This was something that was featured in the likes of Gran Turismo 5 and I believe GT6 as well, but my memory is not that clear on that game. Um, but in terms of seasonal events, again, it's just odd job events really that pop up and refresh from time to time. A little bit like the weeklies, just overall more of them and better quality. So this is definitely something I would love to see return in a full way with GT7. It feels like a massive waste to not have have seasonal events in the game. Honestly, for me, this feels like a Gran Turismo staple, a bit like B-Spec that needs to return. So let's move on to the next point, double credit weekends. What do I mean by this? Of course, this has been sort of treated as a live service game, quotation marks. Um, and honestly, I feel like just every now and again, maybe once a month or even every couple of weeks, just putting double credit weekends on for everything in game will draw a lot of players back. One of the main criticisms of this game is the economy itself in that it is a lot more against the player than previous GT titles. So for me, every now and again, just putting it on as double credits, especially considering they've proven they can do it since the payouts of some of the daily races from time to time do get boosted. It would make total sense that they just double the amount of credits you can earn for that weekend, get a bunch of players back and get them enjoying the game and buying the cars they want. So for me, this feels like an absolute necessity, especially if they're claiming it is a live service game now. So just like this point, let's keep with the economy of GT7 for the next point, and that for me is going to be removing the microtransactions. I think we all know that it failed absolutely spectacularly when it came to microtransactions in this game. One thing that really does bug me is a full price game with microtransactions added in. It makes literally no sense, and from every single news source that I've seen, it absolutely flops with GT7, not really making them any money with this microtransaction stuff. Honestly, we're two and a half years into the game, either change it to like it was in GT Sport where you just pay for that specific car or entirely remove them. At the end of the day, they're a failure, your fan base doesn't want them, they're not really that necessary, just get rid of the microtransactions. It really doesn't really bode well or leave a good taste in my mouth when it comes to a full price title having these things crammed in. Although I am curious if there is anyone out there that actually does enjoy having these in game anyway next is going to be new categories one thing that has bothered me ever since gt7 and really even gt sport has been the categorization of the vehicles they are so broad that it doesn't really make sense we have things like classic dtm cars front wheel drive tcr type vehicles all crammed into the likes of the group 4 class as well as the likes of group 3 as well with some of the older cars even group 2 when it comes to some of the super gt and such that it just doesn't really make sense the categories are far too broad and honestly i could probably sit here all day talking about where to put specific cars how to recategorize them and honestly maybe down the line i might make a video for it but this is definitely something that needs to be changed 
change. The categories at the minute are a complete mess and nonsensical, meaning that a lot of cars go absolutely unused. Honestly, I believe streamlining the classes would just make the game overall just much better and much more competitive. And finally, this is one that has been massive since update 1.49, the whole PP error fix. So what do I mean by this? If you've been tuning any of the classic cars in GT7 and you're trying to produce some drag builds, high power builds, then you will probably have run into this. Essentially what happens is if you do the engine swaps, try and do some big power builds, you will end up with the error and it cannot be calculated and cannot be used or driven. And it's an absolute nightmare to actually go ahead and fix it. I think on one hand it's to try and stop glitch builds, but at the same time, it's absolutely making a bunch of high power cars absolutely irrelevant and it's extremely frustrating especially if you're like me and you like making drag builds drift builds and all that stuff with many many different cars in the game typically it does only necessarily affect some of the older cars in game but it isn't out of the realms of possibility that it can affect almost anything again it does seem like a bit of a massive mess when it comes to what will necessarily cause it so there you go that's my personal 10 things don't forget to leave yours in the comments below as i'll be putting them into a separate video just to ensure they're different and things such as specific cars and specific tracks i'm not necessarily going to put in as again i could sit there all day talking about what cars i want and what tracks i want to the game but be sure to let me know of anything that you want to see fixed for that video a little bit later down the line now anyway i did mention at the start of this video to wait till the end as i do have a few plans coming for the channel in the upcoming weeks so let's just quickly talk about that i put a poll out the other week i believe about a week ago or so just asking what you guys wanted to see from the channel now one of the overwhelming votes was of course for the money grind week now what i'm going to do is go ahead and of course cater to you guys that want to see that content so for the next upcoming seven days i'm going to have a money grind week of course the likes of the weekly challenges and that will still all be here but it will be purely focused around monetary gain builds with the new cars glitches you know just making as many credits as possible then the week after this is one that i'm genuinely looking forward to do i'm going to do a top five and top ten week looking at all different cars tracks and all that kind of stuff but again those do take a lot longer to make so i may have to spread that out to a couple of weeks and then i'm also going to go into after that a jdm week american muscle week and all that kind of good stuff so i am bringing themed weeks back to the channel this is something that i used to do previously i really enjoy it and it does allow me to focus on certain topics over an entire week's period on the channel so i hope you guys will join me for those a massive thank you to everyone that put the votes forward for that and a massive thank you to everyone watching this video i hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend take care guys peace